Good morning, everybody. It's your sister, your friend, Ayobola here. Welcome again to today's edition of Wednesday Word and Worship. I appreciate you taking the time to join me in today's study. So I've been talking about purpose for a couple of weeks now, and I'm going to carry on with that because purpose is very, very important. Like I said in previous editions, when we don't know the purpose of something, abuse of that thing is inevitable. So today we're going to be talking about the secret that will enable us to fulfill that purpose. And the secrets, there are five of them that I'll be talking about. They are actually not secret, but they are open secret. But people fail to recognize them, and so they seem to be secret. But really, they are things that we can do. They are there in the open for us to do and for us to be able to ensure that God's purpose for our life comes to pass. The very first one of the secrets is minding your focus minding your focus you know whatever we focus on whatever we pay attention to becomes magnified so what are you paying attention to are you paying attention to the past failures you've had are you paying attention to the past uh, not so uh, good experiences that you've had and so whatever you are focusing on if you're focusing on failures if you're focusing on bad things that is exactly what will be manifested in your life an example of uh, of such that I want to give is, um, is a story in the Bible about Jacob and that I find that story very fascinating and this story is about animals focusing on something for them to produce after their own kind so that's that, that story is found in Genesis chapter 30 so um, Jacob put an image before his animals and when those animals were going to replicate they were replicating exactly what they had seen so when animals can reproduce what they have seen can you imagine what we will reproduce whatever we see is what we will reproduce so we should be very mindful what we pay our attention to let's pay our attention to what we want to see manifest in our lives not what we don't desire the second secret that I want to talk about is regulating our internal beliefs. You know, our internal beliefs make who we are. We are made up of what our internal beliefs are, whatever we believe about ourselves, whatever our value we see ourselves as, that is what we will become. Whatever we think, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. If you think you are a great person, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That is exactly what the outcome of your life is going to be. But if you think, uh, I'm a wimp, I'm a... Uh, I'm a victim, I'm a pawn, and you know, I'm, a, I'm at the mercy of other people, then that's exactly what your life is going to be. And another story I want to uh, use to highlight this is the children of Israel. You know, they were going through the wilderness for 40 years and God had provided for them. God had fed them, God had sheltered them, God had given them water where there was no water. And now the, the, the time came when they needed to go and obtain the promise of God, the good land God had promised them. And they went and then 10 of them came back. Out of the 12 people, 10 came back and gave a, a very bad report and said to themselves, we ourselves will feel that we are grasshopper. So that was a concept they had in their mind. And so they saw themselves as, as that and they couldn't uh, obtain the purpose of God for their lives. They couldn't obtain what God wanted for them. So we have to regulate our internal beliefs. How do you see yourself? What do you believe of yourself? If you believe good, you get good. If you believe jargon, you get jargon. On the other side, uh, Joshua, he was also part of those people. He said, no, we, let's go in, we can obtain it. And he did that because he believed that he could do it. And he did that. So the third secret that I want to talk about again is controlling your external influences. Now, the first one is your internal beliefs, but now I'm talking about external influences. What do you read? What do you see? What do you watch? What do you read? What do you hear? What do you speak about yourself? The Bible talks in Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. It says, be, 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 be mindful, be careful what you see. Mark 4, 24, it says, be careful what you hear. So all the things around us, surrounding us, they, they, they form who we become. They, um, they, they, they develop how our internal beliefs will be. So we have to be careful what we are reading, what we are, what we are hearing, what we are even speaking to ourselves. And even far more important than that, what company are you keeping? 
What company are you keeping? And I just want to dwell a little bit here, you know, especially when it comes to marriage. Especially when it comes to marriage. The person that you decide to marry can change your life for good or for worse forever. So we have to be very careful. What people are, what are the people influencing us? What are the what are the things that we are seeing? What are the things that we are allowing to come into our 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 spirit, our mind? Because what we see is what we become, and what we become is the outcome that we're gonna get for life. So that's the third um, secret. The, the fourth secret I want to I want to talk to us about is you know in working out the purpose of God for your life in working out any particular goals any particular dream vision that you have for your life you just have to stay on track you know life is not just a smooth um, a smooth journey life is ups and down like life is twists and turns sometimes everything will be great sometimes things will be challenging so you have to stay on course you have to stay on course room was not built in the day some of the things that could that could be an uh, that could hinder you that would want to make you not to stay on track is obstacles you might face financial obstacles or maybe uh, or people uh, can be an obstacle to you. People may not support you. Just stay on once you know this is the purpose of God for my life. This is the goal that I'm aiming to attain in my life. Stay on, stay on course. Stay on course. Another, another thing that may try to dissuade you from your journey, from your purpose is distraction. You know, people might come, especially when you're trying to do something new and the uh, Somebody might come and say, ah, nobody had ever, has ever done this before. Why waste your time? Or somebody might come and say, oh, I, I, I've done it before. I actually know people who have done the same thing and they have failed. Don't mind them. Don't let people dissuade you. Don't let them distract you. Somebody might come again and say, oh, you are working too hard. You are trying to do too much. Let's go and play. You just stay focused. Time for play. Time for enjoyment will come. Stay focused. Stay focused, don't be dissuaded, don't be distracted. Another thing that could stop you from being focused on your journey, stay focused on your journey, is failures. You know, failures is part of success. You can never be successful until you are failed because when you fail, it, it gives you the experience of how to do things better. So when you fail or you make any mistake, rise up again, dust off. Uh, knock off the dust and start the journey again. So keep pressing on, keep pressing on, keep pressing on. Paul says that I keep pressing on to obtain the price for which God has taken hold of me. So that purpose, just keep pressing in. Don't let anybody distract you. Don't let any obstacle uh, stop you. And don't let any failure stop you. Shake off the dust, get up again, rebounce and go on with your, with your journey. The fifth one, which I think maybe is the most important one, the fifth secret that I want to share with you is having an anchor. Having an anchor and a rock. You know, an anchor is something that is so unshakable in your heart. It's a firm belief that you hold on to. It's something that you have come to know that it is unrefutable. When everything else fails, you know that this one will not fail. And an example of that is, you know, you know, sometimes you may read the word of God and what pops up to you and you're holding on to that word that God says, I am I'm on top, I'm not beneath. I'm on top, I'm not beneath. And so when you have that anchor, that when everything else fails, you are holding on to that anchor, it will not fail. I'll give you an example. For me personally, I had an anchor and it's still an anchor for me. It was a dream that I had. I was in, in, I was in a situation that my life was just so confused, but I had this dream and it was so vivid. And God told me in that dream that he knows where I was going because I just was confused. Everything was just so confusing. But in that dream, God told me clearly that he knew where I was going. And so even right now, when things seem all not put together, when things seem, when things seem all confusing, I quickly go back to that word. I quickly go back to that dream that says that God knows where I am going. God has me in his hands. He's not going to mislead me. So we need an anchor. We need an anchor. A word from God that you read, a vision, a prophecy, an encounter that you have with God so that when everything else fails, you know for sure 
that thing is not going to fail. So I'm going to just go through again like I always do because I always like it to get what I'm trying to say. The first secret that we need to have in, in order for us to achieve the God's purpose for our lives or God's goals for our lives is to mind our focus. Mind where we put our attention. Let us not put our attention on things that are negative, but rather let us put our attention on things that are heavenly, on things that we desire to happen in our lives. The second secret is regulating our internal beliefs. What do you think of yourself? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a grasshopper, like the children of, of, of Israel? Or do you see yourself as David, a young man who said, I'm going to knock you down, Goliath, because I am part of the army of, of the blood of hosts. So it's very important that we regulate what beliefs, what values we hold in our, in our mind. Thirdly, the top secret is controlling our external influence. What do you see and what do you see? What do you look at? What do you read? What do you hear? What company do you keep? These are vital things because they can affect our life forever, especially when it comes to marriage. They can affect us. So be, be very careful who you flock with. Be very careful who you listen to. Be very careful who speaks into your life, what you read and what you see. The fourth thing is to stay on course, stay on the journey, no matter how difficult it seems. Life is never uh, a straight journey. Life is ups and downs. Just stick to your goal. Just keep on to the, uh, onto your journey and God will get you there by all means in Jesus' name. And lastly, not the least, is number five, having an anchor in the rock having an anchor in the word of God that is something that it is so settled in your mind, unrefutable. You know that when everything else fails, you are, in fact, there is a place here that I need to read to you. First John chapter one, verse one and three says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which we, our eyes have seen, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. So this is something that you know, that you know, that you know, you heard from God. You know that you know you heard from God. And if all else fails, you are holding on to that anchor. You are holding on to that an encounter and you know God's purpose for your life will surely come to pass. Thank you very much for listening and I, I pray and I hope that this has richly blessed you. Subscribe to my channel, keep commenting, like and share and share and share. And again, I'm going to ask if you have any topic that you would like me to talk about, I would really like you to put it down there so that I can research about it, I can study about it and I can share with you. So God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and I'll talk to you again next week in Jesus' name. Bye for now. Love you. Bye.